All right, welcome to the V Network Radio. I'm your host, uh, Don Padgett, and we got a wonderful program for you today. Uh, we got a special, special guest all the way out of Florida, uh, Daniel Musgrove, and he's a, yeah. a in- international global artist um, and producer, uh, you name it. He does it um, right here on the V Network Radio. We're going to pull him in all the way from Flo- Florida. All right. All right, here we go. All right, you're live. All right. How you doing, Mr. Musgrove? Uh, most excellent. You know that we down here in Florida, so we only got one climate and that's summer. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Hey, um, I'm, I know you have a busy schedule today, so, um, you know, we just listened to one of your project, uh, one of your songs. It's all about you, Lord. And, you know, um, and I love it that, you know, um, you can kind of uh, mix the hip hop flavor, the, the the rap flavor into the gospel music, uh, you know, and I, I, I just love that because in order to reach our young people today, sometimes you have to take a twist in some of the, your music styles. And uh, I listened to your project and I'm telling you, it is fabulous um, And uh, on today. And um, yeah, and so... We're so happy to have you here with us. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, uh, introduction to our fans. Uh, Daniel Elijah Musgrove. Yeah. Uh, just from my tell, I came from a Christian background. <laughs> yes. Sir. My my mom, my dad's a pastor. My whole family. I myself is um, ordained minister okay. and um, love God, man. We just love God. And uh, the music, I mean, has its own identity because um, I was originally born in Freeport, Bahamas, mm-hmm. and um, at a very young age. So I grew up with, you know, the R&B, the rap, and everything like that, which was like taboo for us being Christian, bring um, past his kids, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, that that particular track you just heard. And I don't know because it has a Jamaican flavor. Because um, I was, I did that feature with one of the, one of the biggest um, Caribbean artists in the world. Actually, his name is Papa San. Wow. Um, he's a, he's a platinum artist. Yes, he is. Uh, and and I was blessed to have the opportunity to do that song with him. But the basis of that song is this. Uh, it says Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, El Shaddai. But he says that. Rafa Jaranisi Elohim El Shaddai. These are the names of Jesus. Yes. 
And um, the reason we did this song is because both of us were signed with a major label. Mm -hmm. And we all had issues about them wanting us to take the word, the name Jesus out of us, out of our music. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a slap in the industry, industry face when we come right back and, and do a song that's saying all the names of Jesus in it, Jehovah Jireh, not all of them, but you know what I'm saying, the majority, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, El Shaddai, all of them, you know, because if we can't lift up the name of Jesus, what's the point? Right. That's right. <laughs> and that's what the music is all about. I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and that's one of the things is that, you know, a lot of artists, and, and, and that's the thing about singing gospel music. You've got to know something about Jesus, you know, in order for you mm -hmm. to touch folks. Uh, there are artists that, that, that get out there and try to sing an, about Jesus, but somebody in that audience is going to know you know, uh, uh, by their testimonies, you know? Um, and so, yeah, so definitely, I, well, you know, you do a lot of, uh, you have wear a lot of hats. Um, you do, uh, recording, you do uh, production work. Also, uh, you own a, um, a studio and a production company. Is that correct? Yeah. You know, yeah. what's you know, it's crazy. Um, I originally didn't set out to, you know, be an artist, per se, mm -hmm. artist. Mm -hmm. Grew up knowing how to play um, guitar and stuff. I played in the church and so forth. It was not till I was past the age of 45 that I said, let me do an album. Mm -hmm. I didn't have no idea it would get so big. Mm -hmm. I, um, my, my, present, my present project right now, it's uh, number 20 on the global charts. Yes. Can you and, imagine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the Stay I mean, Alive. Stay Alive? Stay Alive album, yes. Yes, the Stay Alive album. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, and this is globally worldwide. You mm -hmm. recently won an award. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, um, they gave me a, I got a plaque from DRT, which is Digital Radio Tracking. That's the system that tracks the radio airplay worldwide. And I came in at, num I've been on the charts on the top 50 for the past seven weeks straight, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. And um, they gave me a plaque for um, being, coming in number 20 globally. You yeah. know, it was a complete surprise. One complete of the, surprise. wow. And, um, you know, we're, we're showing a little of the uh, portion of the um, Stay Alive uh a cover now the stay alive cover i mean it just speaks <laughs> volumes you know um oh, we, we oh. posted um the stay alive cover and uh the interview session and people were like wow you know i mean they were looking they said oh you know you got the pit bulls out there you got the nice ride you got the fancy house in the background <laughs> and then you got the church <laughs> uh, now yeah. Gun, no, that hard, pro the, that drug. project that 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 you that that you came out with um the stay alive project tell us about the whole entire project well i mean i grew up in miami i mean i don't know if you know this you know what street life it is because even though coming from a christian background i don't know if you know this the i think the devil fight pks harder than he do a regular person because yeah. they go after they go after the ones that's hard to get right if, if you're if you already out there smoking and drinking and all that stuff the devil don't pay much focus or attention to you mm -hmm. but come from a good family a good background come from a preacher's kid know the word he try extra hard to convert you to get right. you on his team Mm -hmm. Because believe it or not, if he gets you on his team, it's going to be easier for him to convert others. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And I, I I truly believe that. That's why I had such a fight. Um, I, I wrote a book called Stay Alive, and, and it's a lot of it is it's explained in the book. And in the music, um, I have a song say No Matter. That was the first song that got me recognized. They got me um, signed to a major label. It says, no matter what they do, won't distract me. No matter mm -hmm. what they say, won't sway me. 
I'm living my life for Jesus. I'm living my life for Christ. Right. No matter how they scare fool me, no matter how they plot won't trap me. I'm living mm -hmm. my life for Jesus each and every day. Mm -hmm. Now, if I say these words and don't mean them, then that's that's like a slap in the face of God. So right. I that's how I live daily this on a daily basis. Um my accountant, he's kind of upset with me because I bought a TV station and I <laughs> turned it all all gospel. And he says, you're losing millions in revenue from mm. not running secular programming. Right. And I'm like, so? <laughs> I'm not no millionaire that I can throw away money, but I'm saying right. something's important to me. Right. You see? Mm -hmm. Everything I, all my businesses, they all did. I even, I had... In my house, I had the pastor and the congregation come out many years ago with the bless oil and then anoint all four corners of my home. Mm. And we dedicated it to God. Mm -hmm. Even where I live, my recording studio dedicated to God. The TV studio dedicated to God. Wow. The real estate business dedicated to God. Mm -hmm. Everything we do, our business dedicated, dedicated all to God. Yes. And I. That's why I know I'm going to have longevity in this. <laughs> anyway, there I go now. I doubt I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, because, you know, we, um, and that's one of the reasons why we have this uh, platform is to hear from uh, the artists and to hear from the recording companies and VPs and presidents, uh, you know, to hear from them and their perspective. You know, a lot of times we go into the studio and um, we don't know, you know, too much of uh, the engineer, uh, their personal life or, or the things that they do. Um, and so hearing your testimony, you know, um, is an encouragement to uh, somebody out there i know it's definitely an encouragement to myself um you know mm -hmm. uh being in the ministry and i could i could i could attest to what you um you know some of the things that you've probably gone through and uh you know uh <laughs> from in the in the ministry you know and um you know it just you and once you're an artist uh once you're a musician and i play guitar i play guitar in the church you know i started out as a guitarist you know, and so once you've started out into the music, you, you know, you, you can't give it up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can't give up the music. Um, some people stop and quit, but it's going to it's going to come back. And it's going to eat them away, eat them away till they come back to the music. You know what I'm saying? Some sort of way. Like stuck in your head for weeks. <laughs> yeah. You hear a sound or yeah. I can't do focus until I go to the studio. <laughs> yeah. And and here's the thing is that uh years ago I was sick and um and uh you know I had stopped the music. I had just said just given up mm. years ago and I had stopped the music and so um um I was laying in the hospital and then I had a visitor come in and the visitor came in and said, "Oh, you 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 you're not listening to any music. You not. You, I remember when you used to play the guitar and this and that in the church." And <laughs> and so uh, after that, you know, I I got up and uh, just started listening to music. And I'm telling you, the healing power, the words in the music is. I mean, it got me generated. I am uplifted, you know, through prayer, fasting, and just understanding what my purpose is in life. And I got it back going again. So, yeah, so definitely it's a plus. So proud of you. Um, awesome. tell, tell us, um, Mr. Hargrove, um, what artists have you worked with in the, in the, in the arena of gospel? I know you stated you, uh, the universal artists of, Papa San, of course, uh, worldwide, Papa San. Yeah, well, he's just one in many, many, many. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, for, I've, for, I've opened for Shirley Caesar, mm -hmm. Yolanda Adams. I've been on Bobby Jones Gospel uh, three times. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, Donnie McKirkland opened for Yolanda Adams. Mm -hmm. I mean, all over the New York, Philadelphia, Virginia, yeah. uh, I mean, just literally all over the country. Right. I mean, doors have just kicked and bust open for me. 
Mm-hmm. And um, I always say to myself, hey, you're not a great singer. But um, I'm like, if my message is great. I'm telling <laughs> people about Jesus. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It take you a long ways. <laughs> yep. Um, yep. Uh, you, let's up. talk about your favorite songs on, on the project, um, Stay Alive Project. Let's talk about your favorite songs. Well, uh, my favorite song is, it has to be It's Yours. Mm-hmm. It's a, I mean, just, if you listen to the words, mm-hmm. I mean, it's yours. It says, um, I've been through heartaches and I've been through pain. Mm-hmm. I've been through time. Wish it was rain. Mm-hmm. But constant that remains the same. I can always call on Jesus' name. Yes. No matter what the devil may throw our way, I'm trusting God for a brighter day. Because guess what? The battle that we're fighting is not our own. Mm-hmm. God said his and his alone. Right. And I believe those words. Right, so, right. Uh, um, my wife in particular, she tells me, say, you're always so calm and you're always so relaxed. And like you don't worry about anything. Mm-hmm. She said, how can you be so complacent and so content? Mm-hmm. And I'm like that even when things are going wrong. Wow. <laughs> I said, because, honey. I done been through so much that what m- most people think is pure hell is a good day for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you you look on you looking at someone who's sitting in prison for five months, um, about to do a hundred and five year sentence, Mm-mm-mm. and I got I walked away after five months. Wow! Because first off, is I was innocent. But, but, you know, it takes more than just that to to navigate this justice system today. You know that. Yes. I mean, the the book says it. I mean, in my book, um, Daniel must go stay alive so God can use you. And um, and we're we have a, a feature film film about the my life story of what I went through. Mm-hmm. But what got me is. Um, when when I was sitting in the jail cell. And I looked up at the bars one day, they just transformed and it looked, they would look like, like bones, like giant bones. Mm. And I, you know how you have a awakened vision? Yeah. I knew I was in the belly of the whale. Mm. I was calm. Started a, I started Bible study in my cell. We started Mm. off with just me one, then another one, then another one. But by the end, by three weeks, we had 15 people in in Bible study. Mm-hmm. And you know what's so amazing? These gentlemen knew the Bible better than me. Mm. Grew up reading the Bible. But these gentlemen, it, it's so shocking to, to see these people. And they, they, they're they arguing at some, t- at some points about the points in the Bible. And they're dissecting it. And, and they're telling what it means. And. God just amazes me the way he can show up and show out anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know? That's right. That's but right. I, but I'm patient. I wasn't worried about, I, I can honestly tell you, I was not worried about staying there long. Mm-hmm. My problem was, I didn't know exactly what God had in store for me. So I go to court and um, they dismiss three charges. I had 14 charges, by the way. Wow. 11 and three misdemeanors. Mm. I go to court the first week. They dismiss four charges. Mm. I sit in jail another month. I go back. They dismiss another three charges. I go back to next week. They threw out another. You see? Mm. Until it came all the way down to, okay, you can leave. You can get out today. We we want you to do a year on probation. Mm-hmm. I'm like... <laughs> Can that's you imagine God? God? That's, that's God. I, I, it <laughs> reminds me. It reminds me of the story of, of uh, uh, in, the, in the Bible uh, uh, when the, uh, when uh, Peter was in pr- prison. Yeah, and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, what happened was that the uh, angel came and just touched them, and uh, <laughs> and when he touched when he touched them, that uh, you know it, the the. 
he began to come out of the prison, you know, and then he began to look through all these different jail cells and things. And then the prisoners, they looked around and said, where is he at? You know, um, you know, and uh, Herod, he was looking all over and, uh, and looking all over for him and said, hey, where is he at? You know, but God sent that angel to touch him and, and he was loose out of that prison. Yeah. And then the folks didn't believe it. You know, he got to the to the gate. And then the folks wasn't, uh, they didn't believe that he was out of prison, you know, and uh, they began to uh, say this and that, oh, uh, the the doorkeeper and then telling the doorkeeper, oh, you, you, you just telling lies. <laughs> and they had to see it for themselves to, in order to believe it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know, what's crazy about my story is um, they had witnesses came forward like a week after I was arrested and testified that I wasn't the guy they were looking for. Mm. Wow. I was accused of, of armed robbery. Mm. The actual general who, um, who was robbed say, no, that wasn't him. Mm. It wasn't him. Mm. And uh, they still kept me in jail for five months. Mm -mm -mm. But I, you know, I was angry at first, but then I, I realized God don't make mistakes. Right. Just the basis of me starting that Bible study and in, in, in jail. I don't know how far, but it could have been just for that purpose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you think? And oh yeah, definitely. Um and, and uh we may have somebody uh that's out there that's a listener, a viewer that's out there that's going through some some of the same things or or, or on the direction of the, they don't know which way to go. Um, and so, you know, Jesus is the way he's the, he, what, what the Bible says, he's the way, the truth and the light. No man coming to the father, but by me. <laughs> oh, it, it's so, it's so awesome that you just said that mm -hmm. because, you know, I own a TV network. That's all gospel. Right now we have like 17 shows. Most of them are like ministries on air right now. And some of these are like big pastors and the bishops and apostles, you know, people with big churches and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I always must, I must sit down face to face and talk to them. You know, not because there's people have a title that they, they mindset is, is, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be careful what I say because touch not God anointed, you know that. Right. Right. But I always ask them one question. I, do you believe that no one can come to the Father but through Jesus the Son, Jesus mm. Christ? Mm. And if they say yes, they pass the first test on what they can get on my network. Mm -hmm. If you can't admit that you can't get on my network. Right. Because there's a lot of people who call themselves Christian, but they don't believe in Jesus. You're right about that. You know yep. what I'm talking about, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They believe Jesus was the Messiah. They don't mm. believe Jesus is the Son of God. Mm-mm-mm. So if you can't say that, then you have no business on my network. Right. And I'll fix a lawsuit or whatever. Anyone <laughs> want to throw at me. Yeah. I don't have no shareholders. I own the company. Yeah. Well, me and my wife. <laughs> yeah, you know, and the, you know the thing is too with the artists, you know, um, even even ours. I, when when we grew up and we were singing in the uh, gospel groups, um, that was one of the uh, rules and regulations is that you knew about Jesus and that you went to uh, a service at least once or twice a week. You know, be active in services. Nowadays, uh, Joe Schmo can come into any kind of uh, gospel arena and and hoop and holler and it is no church in them <laughs> so um if you could um encourage um a, a new artist that's out there or, or existing artist that's out there how would you be able to encourage them and 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 what would you say to them and why well i mean i don't think there's a one situation that will work for everybody except jesus mm -hmm. there's Everyone has, if you would ask this question to 10 different artists, you get 10 different answers. Mm -hmm. But me, I've been asked it a lot of times, and my, my answer is always the same. Mm -hmm. Know why you're doing it. Yeah. You see? If you look at it as a job, then, you know, nine times out of 10, if you work hard and you real put everything into it, you will succeed. But if you look at it as your ministry, the way I do, you already won. Mm -hmm. 
You see, I've been asked, I've been asked, also asked, um, what's next, Musgrove? You, you, um, you, you, um, you've been signed to major label. You have, you know, you have a gold album. You, um, you got your TV network. You, you got all these big things happening for you. What, what's next? What's your goal? And I'm like, I already reached my goal. Mm -hmm. Thing that's happening now is just blessings upon blessings that God has granted me. Yes. You see? So the only thing I strive for now more than I already have is to put, I believe, first of all, that musicians, people who do albums, people like myself, but I don't, I don't categorize myself as a artist. I'm a minister. Right. So if you, if you minister, you can't go wrong. If you actually minister in the word of God, you can't go wrong because I can honestly tell you, Jesus don't fail. God do not fail in anything he do. Right. So imagine this. You pouring out from your heart, your mind, your body, and your spirit, and from Christ, from in the name of Jesus, truly from your heart. Tell me, how is it possible that you can possibly fail? That's right. It won't happen. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a second. How can you fail if you're doing it in truth? Mm -hmm. For the name, to lift up the name of Jesus. That's right. Brother, if you come from your heart, and I, I challenge anybody about this. If you come from your heart and you lift up the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. you will not fail. Mm -hmm. That's right. You, you think it's possible for you to fail? Hmm. And I believe that. That's why I've been so successful. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, I tell you, um, and uh, that's a great tip. And anything that you do, you put God first in anything that you do. Um, um, I know you've uh, worked with so many different artists all over the world. Um, give us a little tip um, in recording, um, you know, the recording, because we have a lot of artists that's out there in the industry. They go into the recording studio. They expect the, the you know, they expect to get in there and get out of there real quick and just get a project and just it's throw it out there and just slap it out there. <laughs> Of, trust me, brother. It's a lot of work. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not easy at all. Mm -hmm. I I tell I tell artists when they come in here, you you have to leave everything outside. Right. I I make them leave their phones, and <laughs> they can't come back in the studio with their phones. If you have something so pressing and so busy, then you reschedule. Mm -hmm. You have to put. You have to. It's like you on a. It's like you are ministering. You have to put your all into it. Mm -hmm. You have to let go the distraction so right. God can flow through your music. Now, I didn't know this from day one. I had to learn this. I definitely had to learn it. And then uh, the other thing is I surround myself with a lot of people who knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. oh, I hear you. <laughs> and so um, when you are in the studio, you do a, a lot of the engineer work, or do you have other engineers that come in uh, to work along with you? Well, um, I have a pretty sound crew. I mean, one of my engineer has six gold albums. The other one has three wow. gold albums. So these guys have been around. And finally, that, you know, I could afford to get the higher up people who knows about the technology and mm. the stuff like that. So I'm blessed and I'm fortunate to be able to take my music. Um, uh, what word I want to use? Um, how would you help me categorize this? I'm not talking about my content. I'm talking about the the actual sound of the music itself, mm -hmm. the the technology part of it. Uh, you know, we got the best sound and technology part. But you know, I do not focus much on that. Every mm -hmm. word I say in my songs, I mean it. I I'm I'm telling you the the honest truth. Every word I say in my songs, I mean it. Else, I wouldn't say it. That's right. I don't or sing something just because it's, it's a catchy hook. Mm -hmm. There's no gimmicks. You know, like some people put out a song and it's catchy and, and you know, which, which I have no problem with. Right. But that's not after. My messages are in my song. 
You know what I really believe? I believe that musicians like myself, ministers like myself, we're the real evangelists. Mm -hmm. Because two, for two things I want to explain to you. How do you call yourself an evangelist sitting in the back of the church, just sitting there? Mm -mm. You don't even get up to go give someone a track outside or go visit someone in a hospital or do anything like that. Mm -mm -mm. But imagine as a musician with an album, the way the digital age is, you know, mm -hmm. you can actually have your music across the world right. in China and in um, Europe you know, Germany, anywhere around the world mm -hmm. and not physically be there. Right. So don't you think it's important that your message be in there? That's right. I mean, your music, your, as a musician, your music could go places your body will probably never physically ever go. Because mm -hmm. time is too short for you to set your foot on each continent, each city in this world. You see? So, yes. but your music make it. So guys, be careful of your message you put in your song. I mean, I've heard secular artists say, oh, I'm not responsible for the, the, the bringing up comes from, from their parents, how they raised them. My music don't lead people to violence. My music don't lead young girls to have sex. And they have all kinds of disclaimers, you see? Right. But that message, if you hear that message over and over and over and over and over and over, You'll go pick up a gun. You'll go sell drugs. Mm -hmm. You'll go after the money. You'll, you'll go after the lust and stuff like that. If yeah. that's all you hear. Yeah. What if all you hear? What, imagine this. What if all you're hearing is the love of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Imagine if that's all the world is hearing every day. Mm -hmm. That's why my network is dedicated to saturate the airways with nothing but Jesus. Seven days a week, 365 right. days. Yeah, <laughs> not even a power outage can stop me. <laughs> oh wow, that is great! I and, say Jesus loves you. <laughs> and uh, and I know you own now multimedia company. Now, what's the name of your yes, multimedia company? Musgrove Music. I own Musgrove Music TV, Musgrove Music Distribution. Um, one of what has a TV network, a Musgrove Music Studios. Um, I have a recording studio, a really nice recording studio. Yeah, very and, nice. Um, <laughs> Y'all check it out. If you if you can watch, if you're not in Florida, you won't be able to see it on local TV. But uh, out of Florida, just go to mmgctv.org. That's Musgrove Music Gospel Corner. All right. And all you right. can watch the TV live on your smartphone or, you know, wherever you are in this world. And this you can get a live feed. You can go to the website mmghtv.org that's musgrove music gospel hour and you can watch from 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 your smart devices um all the programming and everything we have we've been fortunate to uh we've been fortunate enough to put out over almost 500 episodes of 17 different tv shows over the past uh three years wow and uh, which makes us a really hot commodity to local channels because they need programs. <laughs> That's they right. call Musgrove. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And all right. We have really high quality stuff, you know, thank God. Yeah. Would you believe I learned how to edit and do all this stuff myself mm -hmm. while I was signed to a major label? Now, here's crazy. Here's what crazy. They'll pay you a lot of money and not put your music out. Wow. And my case is because I wouldn't take the word Jesus out of my soul. Now, mm, check this mm. out. They even told me what word to replace it with. What? They told me, replace Jesus with him or he, just say him or he. Mm. No. Oh, you don't have to answer us right now. <laughs> no, sir. You know, no. So if you follow, if uh, those of you who followed my career, when I dropped my first album in 2013, then I disappeared till 2015. Mm -hmm. I disappeared. I dropped off the face of the earth. Mm -mm -mm. So, so we here um, with uh, Daniel Musgrove, um, giving us that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. <laughs> Uh, keys to the kingdom. <laughs> um, I'm telling you, uh, you know, uh, we've uh, we're here and um, 
Uh, I just want to say thank you for taking your time out to uh, bless us, you know, and bless our viewers and our listeners out there. Uh, we got to have you back <laughs> when you have more time. <laughs> okay, listen, one more thing before you let me go. If you're ever looking for the answer to any question that's on this planet, no matter what it is, mm. the answer is always the, the number three, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's right. Mm-hmm. You can't find it. If you can't find it, seek in their face. You'll never find it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> All the father, son, that's, that's right. That's the answer. To yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, we thank you so much uh, for your time. And uh, I know you got another session coming up real soon. And, um, we love to have you back again and um we got so many viewers out here that's uh that's tuned in we're gonna have you definitely back all right so we're gonna listen to your favorite artist and then um i'll talk with you after the programming okay thank you so your, much sir. your favorite song all right all right <laughs> and it too many of us fighting a losing battle because we don't use the weapons that's available to us. Weapons of mass destruction. We're talking about the name of Jesus. I've been through heartaches and I've been through pain. I've been through times when I wish it would rain. But one thing constant that remains the same. I can always call on Jesus' name. No matter what the devil may throw my way. And blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I've been through heartaches and I've been through pain. I've been through times when I wish it would rain. But one thing constant that remains the same, I can always call on Jesus' name. No matter God bless you. We're going to have you come back, but we're going to talk after the program, okay? God bless you. All right. 